Let's now Jeff Reeves, InvestorPlace.com editor. And you're looking at all of these things, and you've got, you've got three names. But before we get to those, I guess the question becomes, people are salivating over natural foods now or organic foods in a way that we, we haven't really seen, I guess. And when, you, when you aggregate it, you see that people are eating this way now, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, number one, uh, I think it's just consumer tastes. I mean, as we saw in, in the beer industry, I mean, you guys probably talked about this a lot, that those kind of watered down old beers like Bud Light just aren't as popular and craft brews have risen because consumers, they like to drink a little better. They like a little more flavorful beer. And I think the same thing is and, true and for produce. And they're willing to pay and, up for that, right, Jeff? Right, exactly. And especially in times like this where, uh, you know, believe it or not, with the unemployment rate, there are some people who just aren't, aren't feeling things as well as they were a couple of years ago. And so if you have to stay at home more, the least you can do is eat food that, that's tasty and that is actually good for your family. So, you know, I think it's a combination of consumer tastes and, of course, health concerns as people are cutting out fats and sugary foods. Uh, I, I think it's a natural place for consumer staples to move. And there's actually growth here. I mean, the, the numbers that you shared are pretty important because a lot of consumer staples products or consumer staple stocks that people have in their portfolio, I mean, there's not a lot of upside. You don't see growth like that, that you, in your typical Procter & Gamble or Kraft. So I think this is an important area for investors to watch because it is a consumer staple, but there is a, a kind of impressive growth rate there as a tailwind. Jeff, who should Whole Foods be most concerned about? The new grocers that are coming on the scene or Walmart? Now, I'm, I'm going to say that they're not all that concerned about Walmart because I don't know of anywhere in the country where there's a Walmart in at least anywhere close to a driving distance of a Whole Foods. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a big challenge for Walmart. You hit the, the nail right on the head there that their kind of geography doesn't really play with Whole Foods. Uh, I do think that Whole Foods probably has to worry about its brand becoming a little less hip than it is now. I think part of the thing that Whole Foods has working for it is this big momentum story, uh, how it's just caught on with consumers. But if, if other retailers are able to compete on price, and again, part of the reason Whole Foods has done well is because it's kind of this us versus the big guy mentality. Once you become the big guy and you oh, kind of become yeah. big organic, uh, I don't know how big organic is going to play with a lot of these Whole food shoppers. Okay, so, so this, I think it's going to be smaller companies you haven't really heard of this yet. This really makes sense then to, to switch this around. Uh, let me take what was your third pick and bring it up to the top. And that's a company called Sprouts Farmers Market. This is an up and comer, is it not? You're saying this is a name to buy at the moment. It's a market that could take on the whole foods of the world. Yeah, and it's important to, to, to recognize that Sprouts is a little bit different than some of the other stocks you talk about because it did have a recent IPO. There's not that much earnings history to look at, so it is more aggressive than other plays that are out there. But what I like is in the S1 filing, uh, when it went public, had about 170 stores. It thinks by 2020, the marketplace will support 1,200 Sprouts, far, uh, Sprouts Farmers Markets. So even if they're off by a, a pretty modest amount and they can only get to 1,000, you know, they're, they're, they're getting a factor of 5 to 7 growth instead of growing by 7 to 10 times. I mean, as an investor, that's a pretty impressive growth story. And as we've seen with a broader interest in organic foods, I, I think they can get there. Now, again, this is a, an aggressive play. They recently had an IPO to raise capital and to grow and expand their business. Time will tell if they can actually uh, fill the market that they've seen out there. But the fact that this company went public now and sees that market, I think, says a lot, not just about, about Sprouts, but about the organic space broadly. Jeff, as Sprouts does pick off and we see some more of these companies come in and start to challenge Whole Foods, what does this mean for distributors? Yeah, distributors are probably my favorite way to play it. Um, one stock that I'm looking at right now is UNFI. Um, it actually is a, a supplier to Whole Foods. It's about a third of its revenue. But it also kind of goes on either side of Whole Foods, too, where it takes the big national grocery store chains that do sell organic products and personal care stuff, and it also takes the mom-and-pop uh, kind of health food stores. And any retailer that sells organic stuff possibly uh, can be a UNFI client. So if you're looking for just broader penetration of organics uh, in the retail space, then a, a distributor is a great way to play that because anyone who sells that is going to have to get it from somewhere. And UFI, UNFI has been growing aggressively through expansions okay. for in the last two years. It's got a, a pretty tight grip on the distributor market in, in this little segment. So I think that's definitely a stock, stock to watch long term. And it's outperformed in the last 12 months. We so. want to get Hain in as your last pick. Hain as in Hain Celestial. They behind, it's really, he, Irwin saw and has always said, Liz, I really want to be the craft foods of the, uh, the, the organic market. So they've got everything from Earth's Best to Celestial Teas to Arrowhead Mills uh, to Terra Chips, for example. It's absolutely gigantic. It's had a struggle over the past month, though. What's going on? Is it just the broader market bringing it down? 
Yeah, I think it's a broader market. It's, it's also the momentum running out of gas a little bit. I mean, we've seen this in a lot of momentum plays, whether it's organic foods or Amazon or anybody. But I think that the more important thing to look at is the 12-month returns. I believe it's up about 40% or so. And that's because you're right. It is becoming this kind of diversified organics food powerhouse like Kraft. They just made another acquisition to get into rice product food uh, foodstuffs, which is a, a great growth market with gluten-free stuff that's out mm -hmm. there. So this kind of shows how they're looking around the corner. They're not just resting on their laurels with Earthbeth baby food or Celeste. CLTs. They're looking where the market is going, and they're going to be there. And I think that this is another stock to watch, like UNFI. Uh, it, it, it's a niche play, but it's also a very big one with a good footprint in the organic space. All right, Jeff Reeves, thanks very much. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me, guys. Biotech stock.